I'm going to do an underpainting using raw umber. So I just need a little scoop and then I'll thin it with some sort of paint thinner or mineral spirit. Uh, mix that up and just get an even coat on my canvas. And then I'll start sketching uh, just using raw umber the, and a brush and, and paint thinner. Uh, I'm going to use a ruler here to get a straight line. And uh, I can also work in a reductive way very easily with this at this stage. So uh, whenever you have too much on the canvas or you have something where you don't want it, it's really easy to just wipe it away. So uh, I wipe away some of the excess material and now I'm going to basically just start drawing. So I'm thinking about proportions and uh, sketching some of those in and working my way towards seeing lights and darks, uh, separating the form into light planes and dark planes, and um, kind of doing a block in. And I can go in at any time with, uh, with a towel or a rag and uh, clean up something that I don't like. Another way I can clean up the edges or work in that reductive way is just with a clean brush, a clean dry brush. So I switch brushes and now that will uh, pick up the material instead of continuing to just push it around. So that helped me kind of take care of the, of the end of that pepper there. And I'm starting to focus a little bit more on value now. I have the, the general form, I, I kind of have that block in where I have a light plane, I have a dark plane. I found my core shadow uh, and now I'm looking a little bit more carefully and uh, and touching up these things and trying to get them right, um, working on rounding the form a little bit and uh, m making sure that the contours are correct. You see I'm continuing to focus on that top contour. I'm working through this like a drawing basically. It's a monochromatic painting. If I want it to be darker, I'll use more pigment. If I want it to be lighter, I'll use more paint thinner. And that's it for now. But as I get closer to uh, finishing this underpainting, I am going to use white in one tiny little area. When I feel like I'm at a stage where everything's kind of figured out, I will use just a touch of white for where I see the glares and you see the, the glares just on the, the top right side there. Uh, so I'll, I'll put that down and try to keep that area really bright. Before I start painting, I want to take some time to look very closely at the colors that I'm going to need and actually mix those up beforehand. So I start by mixing up a main batch of that primary green. 
uh, and then I, I lightened it up a little bit with some yellow. And then I went through the mid-tones by adding some raw umber. And then the reflected light is a, has a little bit more uh, yellow brown in it because it's reflecting that brown table that it's sitting on. So that's the reflected light on the far right there. And I'm going to be mixing in liquid at this stage. And this will speed up the drying time. Uh, so I just put a glob there and I'll, I'll kind of mix that into the paint as I go. And I'll start kind of slow here and make sure that the colors that I have mixed up are going to work. So I'll put a, a swatch on the core shadow and uh, work up from there towards the light plane. And you could call this rounding the form. So I go through the core shadow, the mid-tone, the, the center light uh, to that kind of bright green. And it looks pretty good, so I'm just going to start painting from here. Paradise waits On the crest of a wave her angels in plain She has no pain Like a child she is pure, she is not to blame I'm going to start adding my reflected light here and you can see I'm using that green that had a little bit more uh, yellow brown mixed into it. It's important that this isn't as saturated of a green as the light plane because it's in the shadow uh, and and if you were to, to mix up you know uh, a fully saturated bright green that would be that would kind of confuse the illusion so you want to make sure that it is closer to gray and and a bit more desaturated and that is a separate thing from just considering the value of it, you know, of, of how light and dark it is. And uh, you can see that that looks fairly accurate. So um, that looks pretty good. And I'll keep working from here. Don't stop to run. She can fly like a lie. She can't be outdone. Tell me the cost. Let me go, tell me love is not lost Sell everything Without love day to day Insanity's king time I was learning to see all right I'm getting to the stem and this is kind of tricky just because of the size of it it's so skinny so I'll do my best but I do plan on doing a second layer so I'll touch up any imperfections when I go through and do another pass. I'll use the background to help define it and that will help quite a bit. And I'm just finishing the, the three-dimensional space here to conclude this step. I'm going to call this done for now. Like I mentioned, I'm going to come back to this and do another pass, but I have to let this layer dry and it will dry a little bit quicker uh, because of the liquid that we added. 
It should be dry in a day, maybe two days, depending on how much white that you use. But you want it to be touch dry, so you, you should be able to touch it, and it shouldn't be sticky. Uh, you definitely shouldn't be lifting anything up. Uh, you should be able to run your finger across it and, and not smear it or anything like that. Now I'm going to be using linseed stand oil, and this is a slow drying medium. So the liquid was fast drying. Now this, this next layer is going to be slow drying, so, and it's a good rule of thumb as you add more and more layers you want to add slower drying layers on top of the faster drying layers you can get some problems if you were to do it uh, vice versa the first thing I'm gonna do is warm up this whole background it's a little bit cooler than I would like so I mixed up this reddish brown with the stand oil and then a little bit of mineral spirits to, to thin it out and make it easier uh, to move because the stand oil is very viscous it's very thick uh, so just a touch of, uh, of mineral spirits will we'll do that. I'll cover this all, and then I'm going to use an oval mop brush to smooth it out. I brought some of that reddish brown onto the pepper, so I use mineral spirits to wipe that off, and I make a mistake here. Remember I mentioned white is, a, is slow drying? I didn't check to see if my white was dry or not, so I smeared that white all around. Uh, but it's not a problem. I can wipe it up. I just got to do a little bit of, of touching up of the green now. Uh, but I, I warmed that background, and now I'm going to do the same thing over the pepper. You can call this technique glazing, where I'm going to mix in uh, that oil and do another pass over the pepper, and I'm hoping to increase the saturation to make it brighter, to make it uh, fuller and, and just deeper colors. So that's the goal of this. I'll work on the pepper for a while, and then I'll finish by completing the wood surface that it's resting on top of. trying to build up a solid base and get some of that wood grain I'm gonna use a palette knife and scoop up that red oil mineral spirit mixture that I used at the very beginning of this glazing step and use the edge of my palette knife to get some horizontal lines and they're pretty organic I'm not trying to be too specific with them I just want to get a variation of color and a variation of value and, and keep building that up There we go, I'm calling this done. We did an underpainting using mineral spirits and raw umber. We did a fast drying liquid layer, and then we finished with a slow drying glaze to try to richen the colors, increase the contrast, and, and do any touch-ups that we needed to. And uh, you could do more, hypothetically. Uh, you, can, you can keep doing these glaze layers and, and keep building up colors. So that's a little bit of an introduction to the process.